Hi, my name is Kim Bradford, and I'll be defending the Hyperia postica, more commonly known as the alfalfa weevil. Howdy, my name is Bailey Lindholm, and I'm going to be defending the side of the Diarophis noxia, otherwise known as the Russian wheat aphid. And today we are going to be debating which of our pest species can cause the greatest amount of infestation or losses. The alfalfa weevil is one of the most damaging pest species in Pennsylvania and is present throughout the United States. One of the things that makes this particular species such a pest is that it is not native to the United States. Therefore, the species does not have many natural enemies here in the United States. Adult weevils will chew holes in the stems of the alfalfa plants and then proceed to lay their eggs in these holes. The eggs will hatch and then begin feeding on alfalfa leaves. The older larvae will feed on the leaves that have yet to unfurl. Typically, by mid-June, the weevils will have left the fields and gone into hibernation. They are easily distinguishable by their light brown color and their dark brown stripe. They also have a long, thin snout, which they use to eat the leaves of the alfalfa plants. The alfalfa weevil impacts human society by destroying the first yield of alfalfa crops across the United States. Hyperia postica is present in 44 of the 50 states in the United States and on five of the seven continents. This is problematic because alfalfa is a major forage crop used as a main source of animal feed. Humans also use the plant for different medicinal things as well as to gain the nutrients that alfalfa is abundant in. Alfalfa at first may not seem like it is a very important crop, but upon further investigation, research can be done to find many different uses and species that rely on the crop. During infestations, humans are forced to find different food sources for the animals that are reliant on the crop and different sources for the nutrients that the crop provides. The Russian wheat aphid is an aphid originating from Central Asia and southern parts of Russia. It's most commonly known for causing significant losses in crops, specifically cereal grain crops such as wheat and barley. This invasive species can grow to be about two millimeters long, is pale green in color, and is easily distinguished by its double tail. The aphid prefers to feed on leaves of the upper parts of plants and the saliva of the aphid is toxic to crops, which causes a purple or white striping to the leaves of the cereal plants and significantly stunts the growth of the plants. The Russian wheat aphid is also capable of modifying the growth of its host plant. Wheat aphids are one of the most destructive pests that exist to wheat and barley crops, but there are also sources of dangerous viruses, such as the barley mosaic virus and sugarcane mosaic virus. The Russian wheat aphid reproduces asexually, this asexual rapid reproduction is the key to the explosive population growth achieved by many aphid species, making it a major threat to all plants around us. The Russian wheat aphid impacts human society most directly in Australia, with the grains industry being the largest industry present there. The Russian wheat aphid is on the decline as a pest species in the United States. Researchers say that the pest species is manageable as long as farmers are informed of how to treat the infestations. There have been an increase in the number of resistant cereal crop varieties and also in the natural enemy populations. Another way to prevent and get rid of wheat aphid infestations is to use insecticides and also a treatment that can be used before the seeds are planted. It has also been studied that delaying planting at the beginning of cereal crop seasons can significantly reduce infestations. The aphid is only present in 18 of the 50 states here in the United States, so it is less widespread than the alfalfa weevil. The Russian wheat aphid also targets mainly the early development of a plant, and they target only the leaves, whereas the alfalfa weevil feeds on the entire alfalfa plant stem and leaves. The Russian wheat aphid is only detrimental to cereal crops when they're in their mature stages. The alfalfa weevil harms the alfalfa plants for their entire life cycle, starting from birth and continuing all the way up to maturity. 
Then they continue the cycle, reproducing inside the stem of the plants once again. So since the 1950s, research has been done to discover new tools for managing the alfalfa weevil population, and numerous ways have been found to significantly reduce the population of the pest. Researchers found two species of parasitoid wasps that naturally prey on the alfalfa weevil, and on average, kill over half of the larvae found in a field at one given time. These species of wasps, as well as a few species of fungi, are playing an important role in keeping the population low in a safe and natural way. In 2014, the University of California discovered that the alfalfa weevil experienced a 70% overall reduction in the numbers of larvae present. So said differently, they found that more alfalfa acreage in the landscape surrounding individual fields was linked with both increased stability and attack by biocontrol wasps and reduced pest densities and outbreak duration. Thus, planting smaller individual fields that are more evenly spread across the landscape is predicted to reduce weevil impacts and maximize the potential ability to produce the established biological control agents. While it is true that there are some methods of trying to control the spread and damage done by the alfalfa weevil, the same can be said about the Russian wheat aphid to a greater extent. There are braconid parasitic wasps that will inject their eggs into an aphid, which will end up killing the aphid. In addition to that, some of the natural predators of the Russian wheat aphid contribute to the population control of the insect. Ladybugs eat aphids and so do lacewings. These are examples of just two natural predators of the Russian wheat aphid. There are also ways to deter aphid infestations such as planting spring grains earlier in the season and fall grains later. Scientists have also developed aphid resistant barley and wheat, which is helping to keep Russian wheat and aphid infestations at bay. These crops are being continuously improved to be more effective at controlling the aphid population. Currently, they do a relatively good job but improvements can always be made. We can also look at chemical, chemical controls for management of Russian wheat aphid population rather than biological controls. As I said briefly earlier, the use of insecticides can be very effective as long as the coverage is complete. Insecticides have been proven to decrease the number of Russian wheat aphids in a field as long as the pest control specialists avoid low temperature days and completely cover the field in question. These treatments are generally used for persistent outbreaks and that should be kept in mind before using them. Alfalfa weevil development is temperature dependent and the significant portion of their life cycle spent in hibernation makes their population much easier to control. Techniques practiced during stages of dormancy keeps weevil populations low and delays damage done to the field significantly. The Russian wheat aphid is well suited to cooler temperatures and feeds in dense colonies. The Russian wheat aphid has also adapted to dry land climates with an average annual rainfall less than 600 millimeters and therefore is expected to survive in Australian grain growing regions. I believe that the aphid success in adapting to the area in which it can cause the most damage directly is what makes the species able to cause a great amount of infestation and loss. In summation, the alfalfa weevil is the species that would cause greater infestations and losses because it is present in many more locations and environments around the world, making it a widespread pest, hindering the alfalfa production in numerous places. This directly impacts human society because we use alfalfa to combat various health issues such as asthma, arthritis, diabetes, and many more. The alfalfa is also used to relieve menopausal symptoms and is very rich in antioxidants and vitamins, making it a crucial plant to humans. It is also necessary to, uh, to animals because it is a forage crop, so it is used to feed animals as well. If the alfalfa weevil were to destroy large amounts of the alfalfa crop, we would definitely suffer and struggle to feed the animals that have alfalfa as a main food source. This comes back on humans because we value the animals that eat alfalfa for, their own, for our own benefits, such as the dairy cow, chickens, horses, 
beef cattle, and more. All of these animals are essential to human survival because they produce vital household products such as milk, eggs, beef, butter, and more. The alfalfa weevil is the species that would cause greater infestations and losses because of the impacts that they have on the plant and also on the impacts that infestations have on human society. So to summarize, I believe the Russian wheat aphid would cause the greater infestation and loss because it is a species with an impressive survival rate and is known to overcome resistant strains of wheat. The alfalfa weevil species has already been decreased using rather easy and natural mechanisms. On that note, given the fact that the aphid is one of the most significant pests of wheat, this is a species that would negatively affect human beings daily if the infestation of the wheat aphid became uncontrollable. The most basic example of this would be flour made from an infested wheat plant on your dinner table. Collecting flour from an infested wheat plant affects the gliadin gluten ratio. Wheat is used every single day by human beings, and the Russian wheat aphid has the ability to cause significant losses on these plants.